Hello, and this is going to be show off of the my project I worked some time ago. Before I show it off to you, I want to mention that this this was just a proof of concept, and I never get to finish it. And I was thinking maybe it's better to publish it as it is than just to leave it to die off on a dusty shelf and never being released at all. I think community can benefit from it. And I thought, you know, maybe maybe it's the best if I just publish it as it is and uh, if people want and the community think there is a value in it, they can maybe contribute to it or take off from where I finished as I don't really have any much more time to work on it. And yeah, with that said, there's going to be some bugs, uh, probably missing features and and so on. But I'm just going to show where I stopped working on it. You know, it was some time ago and I'm not really sure when I will be able to start working on it again, if at all. So with that said, this is a Marlin firmware VS Code extension and the idea behind it is is to make easier to manipulate the code and write the code and see what you're doing in the Visual Studio Code which is a really great editor. So here I have my VS Code opened and here I have some G-code files which I have generated with uh, Cura. And for example, I can open any of them, you know. You can also take... Okay, let's just start with opening it. You know, I, I don't have a script for this video, I'll just make it up as I go. So, the first I'm going to show you is just opening uh, any basic uh, project. So. Here, here you can see is generated file as you normally would see in the VS Code. I have wrote some uh, syntax highlighting, and obviously, first feature what I wanted to have is to know what all the G codes and M codes does. I obviously can try to remember them, or I can go to the website for Marlin firmware which is here and you have all the explanations and which versions they have and what they do so but that wasn't really good for me so I just wanted to know it on fly and the first feature is that I can hover over all the M codes and G codes and of course I can see all the description the same you could read on the website Marlin so which is kinda nice another thing I didn't want to do was to remember the codes, how to write them, and all the parameters they have. So, the next feature I wanted to implement was snippets. Which, of course, you can see also provides me with the syntax validation, because I don't want to remember all the parameters, and if I made a mistake, and I need, I need to know if it is a correct code or not. Where is the problem? But let's start with snippets because that's a bit simpler. So if I just start writing G, I am provided with all the G codes. And as you can see, we have all everything written on what, what they are. So for example, I select uh, G1. And syntax highlighter should tell me. As you can see also here, the GitHub Copilot suggests me what I potentially would want to do. but. So if I start writing X, you can see that it's expecting the smaller integer, but end found. So I type, let's, well, that just doesn't matter. I just type some number. So let's say four, Y again, you can see and that there are a problem and it's like underlined with a red. And if you hover over it, you can see syntax error. Obviously it disappeared, so there, as I just mentioned, there are some bugs, you know, especially when there are a lot of lines. So I'm just going to say 5. One thing I want to mention is 
every time I change the text it rescans the whole file which is not really desirable uh, what I wanted to make is that it, as I open the file it scans it all for the syntax errors and the next time I make change it only sort of scans that change what I made so it doesn't need to change like millions of lines well check for millions of lines and which is which is something I never got to implement so for example if I type again Y so you can see there's a the first error it pronounces is that there's a decimal or integer, yes, but if I type another one, three, it shows you that there's a duplicate parameter on three. Or even if I put any kind of like D, right, it's showing that E, F, S, X, W, Y, or Z is expected, yeah. But the D is found because G1 doesn't take a D parameter, so... And this goes for every single G code, uh, every single M code, as you can see here, G28, but this is from the generated, right? So G28 it doesn't really expect any parameters, it's just, just like a bool operation X, Y, or Z. I don't know why the Cura is uh, generating these zeros there, but apparently it doesn't cause any problem. Uh, yeah, so that's one thing. Obviously, if I do M, I'm not really sure. One thing I want to mention as well is that I made this project sometime maybe a year ago, and I haven't been done any much of it since then. So <laughs> I might not really remember everything that I was doing with it. I just thought, ah, oh, the hell, I'm just going to make a video, publish it, and see what you guys think. Uh, let's see some M codes which have some parameters. I'm not really sure. Uh, free memory. Set the fan speed, right? And I don't know, let's say T5. Is it going to give me an error? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's see. Tag I, I guess. I'm not sure why is it not giving me an error here mm. okay well it should be giving an error on all the if I have done it correctly as I said this is a very quite unfinished project and I have gone through quite a lot of the syntax highlighting let me just show you for a bit okay let's not rush with it so that was the one feature right so I wanted to do the syntax highlighting if I do any kind of g0s or g1 and if I mistype something you know then it just tells me that this is not allowed right where I made a mistake right with that said the next feature I wanted to have is C actually oh, what am I what this code is so if I press control alt and R it opens uh, graphics in the VS Code Studio which is great and you know it should be showing graphics straight away but I have to make some change in the code and then it obviously is changing showing the graphics so well I can zoom and pan around I can also sort of go through layers select the range right so from there to there and see where I am another cool feature I thought of would be if I could see exactly place that I see here in the Visual Studio code and I could see where I am at here so I just for now I just put like a check mark and as soon as I scroll through and my mouse have like a feature where I could fast scroll and you can as you can see it's sort of showing it's not really <laughs> working well to be honest because it's not showing exactly the same place as I'm I am passing the problem is that I am passing all the G code values to the graphics by skipping 
all the M code. Yeah, I don't have a decoder for the M codes. So the line number which I'm getting like 1906 to 1942 isn't going to be the values in the array of the lines, if you know what I mean. But it's it shouldn't be too difficult to fix. It's still quite nice that I can scroll through and I could like basically cut this part out if I wouldn't want to do it, right? So so that's quite a nice feature, so that's that. So what else? Let's see, I also did uh, also versionings of the Marlin. So if we have a if we don't provide in the flavor any versions of the Marlin, then it's going to take the latest version of it. But if we do something like 1.0.0 then we can see that G5 is only supported in 1.1 uh, version or higher and you know it goes for all the codes if I do <laughs> 0 then you can see neither of the codes were really supported in the version 0 which is quite nice to have I suppose and it's probably now scanning all the code <laughs> there's quite a lot of it or what is it doing? Only 1.1 higher. I'm not sure why is it. Yeah, as I said, it's a bit buggy and it never really got anywhere. Um, so, yeah, I just scanned the whole code and you see how long it took. There's how many lines are there. There's not that many lines actually. As you can see, there's a like empty line and it's complaining that it's expecting some kind of a. G code, so there's some error, um, which probably shouldn't be there, you know, it doesn't matter that. Right, what next? Uh, I also implemented the feature of a timeline, short, sort of, uh, if I press Control Alt and T, I'm presented with this view, and I again have to make a change. And I can see sort of a timeline of my G values and X, Y, and Z values. You can see all these here. So if I unselect, for example, feed rate, you can see extrusion. So I hide that. So I left my Y and Z value. And it's quite useful, for example, if you make a mistake, let's say somewhere in the middle of the program. It also updates on every every change I make in the code. So let's say I say G1 Z minus 300, right? And it's already quite visible here that we are we having that problem there. And if I turn the feed rate off, so you can see here. Okay, I made a probably mistake. Easily you can see that mistype, right? Another feature I really tried to work out but never really got to was the... Oh, and you know, it's pretty cool because you can move them around the panels before I move to the next feature. So you can move this panel here, you can open your graphics panel, right? So you can see there's that 300 layer, I obviously quite easy to notice mistake. And you can open even more panels and stack them up or make another panel and you know place you, you use the VS code functionality for your best. So now I'm going to fix that. You can see it's fixed in all the graphics. So you can move the sliders around. These doesn't really do much, these uh, sort of a uh, just hide lines. Um, this was supposed to hide the points, but it uh, doesn't really do much yet. As well, you can, uh, let's open now another one, for example, this code. So I will collapse that so I get more space and put it next to the 
somewhere around here. So now I have my both codes next to each other. So of course I can open another panel on that. And let's place it here. And you can see the colors are indicated by the the same. Well, of course you have a name of your code, but also it's kind of indicating a little bit by the colors. So I'll just maybe put that one down there. Not really the best placement, but you know it works. So I can have multiple graphics, and this works in the same way. So. What else? Um, I'm just going to close these for now because there's too many of them. And let me just open a new file. I'll just create a new file somewhere here. Uh, where is it going to open me a new file? Okay. In my 3D printing. So, a new file. I'll just make it and call like a test dot g code right and I'll close that so another thing I wanted to make is a uh, how to how if I want to program it by hand I need to somehow figure out the how much in filament I need to extrude right and let me open the graphics on this one so it's a blank, so we don't have anything. I'm not going to define the version of Marlin. As you can see, it's already suggesting me what kind of G codes I can use. So if I hover over it, you can see all these G codes it's expecting or, or comment, right? MT line or line number, but end of input was found. So, so let's start typing, uh, let's say G0, and we'll go to X0 by zero and it should go rapid but I'll set some feed rate to let's say something like that 50,000 or it be 5,000 so now I will move to somewhere like as you can see the copilot already suggested me which is quite a cool feature to be honest and this is another advantage you can take of the VS code to edit your G-code files. So I'll go to G0. Let, let us feed G1x20 uh, Y. Let's go to 2020 and a little bit slower, maybe something like 2000. As you can see the line is drawing here. We are at the 2020 point now. And now let's go to the G one Z Z about zero point two, and I don't think we need to provide the feed rate. And let's start moving forward. G one X. Uh, let it be something like. I don't know, let's say 100. Uh, 120, let me 120. And we stay on the same Y path. Actually, let's talk about the feature about extrusion. When I'm here, I need to extrude, set my extrude to zero. I think I needed to set the end codes as well. I'm, as I said, I haven't worked in this project for a long time, so I had to set my extrusion to absolute. Let's try this. Um, you know, I, if I wouldn't know, I would have to now go to the documentation and read. So let's take a look. Uh, set line number debug. Um, there was some M code, if I remember right. Actually, I should create uh, snippets. That's another advantage you can take of create snippets that basically write the, like a snippet code for you, basically the same way. Um, 
if we deploy filament I think it was something like G28 I'm so far off by now so G20 now Enable steppers. Okay, I didn't think I'm going to spend much time on it because I just want to demonstrate the features rather than waste your time on how to write the G code. <laughs> right. So we are the 120 here now and now I want to extrude some material so what I do I press E and calculate extrusion and it gives me a value so how much it should extrude in these 120 millimeters but it's not actually calculating correctly so this is quite <laughs> not as it should be but it could be um, yeah, so let me go next. So G1, I'll go G1, uh, Y, 120, E, calculate extrusion. And you see already, see he's suggesting me G1, X, but the copilot is trying to guess some values. So I'll just go with that. X20. And now we are back on Y20, right? So I'm going to go up another two. G1, Z, uh, 0 0.4. Um, should I do E0? I probably should extrude. I'm not really sure. Okay, and you can see it's already suggested me the next values. I don't know if the extrusion would be so, that would be pretty crazy because I need to set the absolute or relative. I think extrusion, so I think you need to set the relative extrusion to it. And you can see it's already sort of suggesting for me what to well, what to program next. Of course, I can remove these all of these like extrusion values later if I want to just make like a movement. You see, I'm just programming with two buttons, uh, tab to accept and enter a new line. And how quickly I can sort of write all these quite simple values. I can also do something like control and enter and it's synthesizing solution for me. Let's see what it comes up with. You know, I'll just accept this and it just carries on so as you can see we did quite a bit more and let's let's do some zigzag here uh, where are we now we are at x20 and y120 so it's the this corner right so x120 y120 x x20 so yeah we're there so we go back with G1, Y20, and if I want to delete these, I'll just remove the extrusions because they are not really <laughs> any good. So I can hold Alt and select multiple of these values. Not really ideal, maybe I shouldn't add them in the first place, but... It is what it is. As I said, the extrusion is not being calculated quite well, and there was quite a few problems to figure out how to do it correctly. Ranging from how do I know what's the layer height, you know. Just 
from LEDs. But even if you just do like a G-code programming uh, without extrusions, maybe you do some kind of other G-code program, CNC machine, like milling machine, or a lathe, you know, this would be very, very useful for you uh, as a means. The co-pilot, right, it really helps a lot if you are writing a G-code for uh, milling machines or turning machines. So, for example, here now, uh, let's go X40. I, I don't think I need to put G1 every single time because it holds the last G value, I think, if there was a G before. But, okay. So, I'll go to X40 and Y120. Alright. Okay, there's some problem I can already see. Oh no, why it should stay the same. And now, G1, Y 120. Oh, that's better. Now, X, let's put us G1, X. Let's say, 60 G20 Maybe I should have go a little bit smaller step so I can see uh, X20 Y20 So let's do 22 And again our step is 24 Something like that Remove these, and now the copilot already should know. So I'm um, 26, and then 20, 28, back to 20. And as you can see, how easy it is auto filling exactly what I need just with two buttons, and I don't even need to think about the values. Also, let's say, oh, let's synthesize it to the end. Let's accept the solution. See what the solution we got. And you can see we have a full, okay, it was selecting because I wanted to also move the points around and change the value. There was quite a few things I wanted to do. So because it's white now and I can't really unselect it, I'm going to restart the graphics. So that's that. Let's see where we are now. You're in 96. That's fine. You know, also G, maybe 2. Let's see where we get. So as you can see, we have a G2 working as well. And if I try to now use R, you can see we have expected a smaller integer. If I use it, then error RIJ parameters cannot be used together because they are two different type of circular loops. And yeah, that's that's pretty much all all it is. Right, so you can see we can do a curve. My 3D printer doesn't really have a, such a good uh, G2 support, and it's a little bit like stuttering. And yeah, so what else did I miss? Anything I did? Uh, I don't think. I did. So yeah, um, what do you think about this concept? Um, is it any useful? Should we pursue it? Should the community put their hands on it? Is there any value in it? So let me know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, 
I'm going to be publishing this as an open source on GitHub so other people can contribute to it. And let me see if I had uh, any. of these files um, I just had one more feature but uh, if I remember correct where was that file so wind tower um, yeah STL file doesn't open here uh, tool tag I think it was in the tests oh no this is completely different folder so um, reveal and explorer. Uh, yeah, I think it could also. Should I hold the shift or something? Yeah, you can also import the fi STL files. I wanted to like do a slicer, but never really got anywhere. And yeah, I think that that's about sums it up. Um, do you think it's any useful uh, as a potential? So leave it down in the comments and even if not, maybe you think you could take this to the next level and want to contribute to the project, I'll leave the project link, link in the description. So yeah, I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. Oh, before I go, also if you do your code that it's in VS Code, obviously you can leverage the power of Git and do a version controlling on your project. So as you can see, I made a change here, flavor, I just did that. So all the changes, I have added the file, so you can then, then you can do something like uh, added version. And you know, none of these changes are saved. And this one here, just demo, demo. So you can commit these changes, and yeah, so you can see where you have changed what. Well. So it's quite powerful, and you can come back later and see see all the changes you have done, and jump back to those changes. Initially, this was a bit different project. I wanted to make this for Heidenheim, which worked quite well, as well, but because I didn't have a Heidenheim machine at home, I thought, hey, why not do this for Marlin? And there was a problems with the, with the post-processing of Heidenheim, how many machines there are and versions. So it probably have to be done individually, but programming this way with the Heinlein and snippets and G codes is so much better so please don't use a notepad just use a VS code even though without this extension you can find still find so, so many extensions like even G code right we have some plenty of them already there so so it's quite cool and I think it could be taken to the next level if you feel like so I hope it was a bit interesting and please let me know what you think.